27th to 32 I had to stop my star. My eyes started dripping and stuff like that, so I had to go ahead and just stop real quick. When you have to say amen, amen. Luke 25, Luke 5, 27 through 32. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation NLT. It says, as she later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi seen in his tax collector's booth. He said, follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and left everything and followed him. Verse 29. Later, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of Levi's sex collectors and other guests also ate with them. But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come not the, I have come to call not those who think they're righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. Need to repent. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless this word. Bless our ears, oh God, as we take in this word, Father God. That we just not be hearers of your word, but that we will be doers of your word also. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, and all of God's people said, amen. 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 amen and amen. So today we continue our series that we started last week entitled Risk Takers. Somebody said Risk Takers. Somebody said again Risk Takers. And so the whole purpose of this series is to get us comfortable with sharing our faith and being witnesses for Jesus Christ because there is such a dire need for us to open up our mouths and not be closet saints and go in our respective jobs and our respective families and where we are and be salt and to be light. Somebody say, I must be salt. I must be light wherever I am. We have to represent Jesus Christ wherever we are at all times, not compromising who we are, but being exactly what it is that God has called for us to be. So I want to I want to make it real practical um, today, and I want to talk to you from the subject: What do I say? What do I say? What do I say? I was doing a little research and was looking at what does it take for a person um, that want that has desire to want to climb Mount Everest? What do they have to do? What do they have to do? What do they have to do to prepare themselves um, to be able to do so? And so they have to make sure, they have to take climbing classes. Climbing classes just to get them used to smaller mountains before they get to Mount Everest. They have to do, they have to do, they have to learn the different materials and different things that they're going to have to use, the different climbing gear that they have to use to be able to be an effective climber. They, uh, 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 they have to practice Climbing. They have to do all of these necessary things to go and take such a huge risk to climb Mount Everest. So, Pastor Swanson, can you just sum up real quick what you're saying? In order for us to be effective witnesses and be comfortable with sharing our faith, there are necessary tools that are needed to take risks. You just don't hop up one day and just take a risk without counting up the cost and seeing what it is that you're going to need, how, how you're going to go about doing it, what's the first step that you're going to be able to do. And if there are necessary tools that are needed to be able to take a risk. Now, I also did some research on and just looked at, listen, what, how, what, what's the percentage of the people now that are actually sharing the faith? Get this. 73% of born-again believers said yes, that they have, they know they have the responsibility to share their faith. But only 52% of born-again believers say that they have actually shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. 73% know that I should do this. It's my responsibility to tell others about Jesus Christ, but only 52% actually do it. That's half. Half of people in the, that, that are believers that are not sharing their faith and being a witness and telling others about the good news of Jesus Christ. Why is that? Why is that, saints? How come we're not telling people about Jesus? How come, how, come, how, how come we're not sharing the good news of Jesus Christ? Could it be, I heard somebody say, fear? yes, that could be a thing too. But could it also be a bigger thing that we're not sure of our own salvation? 
And because we're not sure of our own salvation, I can't go and express to somebody else about being saved when I really don't know if I'm really saved all the way. I said this Thursday at the funeral for Sister Betty's daughter, going to church is not going to save you. Because if that's the case, I'm getting the gold star when I get to heaven, Sister Maggie, because I've been in church from the womb all the way from out. All of my life I've been in church. Church will not get you into heaven. Singing in the choir will not get you into heaven. Serving in the church will not get you into heaven. The only thing that will guarantee you a seat in heaven is when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and believe the work and believe in the word of God and walk and walk and move towards the word of God, transforming your life. That, my friend, is what will get you into heaven. So since we know that as believers, again, I ask the question, how come we're not asking ourselves? How come we're not sharing our faith with people? Because I've, got, I've grown to, I've grown to know, know this and to take this into consideration that church has become a place where we want to come and hear about that we have a purpose, that we have a destiny, that something big is about to happen. Because, hey, I still believe that. I said that January 12th, something big is still about to happen. I believe that. I received that. Turn around five times. All that. I believe that. But at the same time, saints of God, church is more than that, more than just that. Church is more than just us receiving those good things that we want to hear so that we can be able to shout and run and have a good time. Church is for us to be able to develop the necessary tools that are needed that we can be able to go out and share our faith with others and tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. This type of stuff right here, people don't want to hear in church. But we need to hear it. That we may be healthy believers and be a reproducing church. Somebody said reproducing church. A reproducing church and sharing our faith with others and tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. Let me just go ahead and dig right into the text. Look at verse 27. It says, later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, also Matthew, seen at his tax collector's booth. And he told him, he said, follow me and be my disciple. Jesus said to him, so Levi got up, left everything and followed him. Left everything and followed him. Left everything and followed him. What? Do I say, I know, I know who Jesus is. I know what he's able to do. But what do I say? That's one of the biggest fears. What do I say? And so after today, I hope and pray that you receive this word that will eliminate their fear, that you will have the boldness and the confidence and the necessary tools needed to be able to say what needs to be said as we're sharing our faith and being an effective witness for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, follow me. And he loved everything. And they went after Jesus. There's three things. There's three things. There's three levels almost of how we share. Uh, three levels in some sense of what, what, how we share our faith with people. We simply tell this what we say. We simply tell them what our life was before Christ came into our lives. We tell them what happened when Jesus came into our lives. And then we express to them and we share with them how life is right now that we're with them. Let me say it again. I hope you're taking notes. This is good stuff to have now. We share with them what life was before Christ came into our lives. What happened once we met Christ. And lastly, how life is now since we are already with him. Let me show you something real quick. Matthew here is a task collector. During this time, task collectors were not everybody's friends. They worked for the Roman government, and so they had a certain percentage of taxes that they get that they had to take, or, or that they, have to, that they have to take on everything. And they had an assessment as tax collectors that they had to pay to the government. So after they paid their assessment to the government, everything else was theirs. So tax collectors went around taxing everything, everything, some stuff higher than what it should be because they understood if once I pay my assessment to the big man, then the rest of the income that I have coming in is just for me. In everybody else's eyes during this time, they were considered sinners. They were not even allowed to worship God in the synagogue. So they were, they were a team of people all off to the cells. Nobody had nothing to do with them. Nobody liked them. They were considered scum of the earth. Scum. Because all they did was rob people of their money. And so, 
Jesus goes, talks to this man, and tells him, I want you to follow me, and I want you to be my disciple. So what is it? At this, at this stage right here, verse 27, that is so attractive about Jesus that Matthew is willing to leave a good paying job. I know he was ripping people off, but he was making some money. A good paying job to follow after Christ who had no benefits to offer him, no financial gain to offer him, no retirement plan, no, no retirement plan, no 401 day. He tells him, I want you to leave everything that you're doing, and I want you to come and follow me. There was something so attractive about Jesus that caught Matthew's attention that he left everything that he had to follow after Jesus. Could it be that in the verses following this, that he saw how Jesus healed the paralyzed man? Could it be that he seen Jesus do things that he had never seen anybody else do before and it caught his attention and said, you know what, I want what this man has. I want what's going on in his life more than I want money. Already an outcast. Already considered good for nothing. If people came in contact with tax collectors, they, they even want their robes. When the, when, the, when, when the preachers are walking around with their robes, they didn't even want their robes to touch a tax collector. Because if they did, they went home, they washed the robe, and they washed themselves because tax collectors were considered unclean. They had from church, couldn't go to the synagogue. All because they ripped folks off in the money. So Matthew has this encounter with Jesus. Jesus comes to his life, offers him a chance of a lifetime, and he takes it, and he follows after Jesus. He follows after Jesus. And now, and now, and now we get the verse 29. I'm not going to be alone this morning, so y'all have plenty of time to get the long star and, and, and get to go and corral before the church rush and all that good stuff. I'm halfway done already. So he gets there to verse 29, and it says what? Later, Levi had a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor, and he invited all of his tax collected friends and guests and said, hey, come on up to the house. I'm making, I, I, I got some pot rolls in the crock pot. Got some cornbread in the oven. Got some mashed potatoes made from scratch. I got some gravy on the stove, and I got my red Kool-Aid with some extra ice. From Sonic in the refrigerator. Hey. 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 So they get that to the house. So now, the transition of the story. Matthew, this tax collector, who's good for nothing, who's an outcast, who's treated like an outcast by everybody, has his encounter with Jesus. He follows Jesus, leaves everything that he has, follows Jesus, and then verse 29, he has Jesus as the guest of honor in his home and invites everybody to come on to the house. To experience Jesus. I gotta believe the left off Bible doesn't say, but I gotta believe with my sanctified imagination that Matthew begins to have conversations with his other task collected friends and say, you know what? Something has happened to me. I came in contact with a man named Jesus. I didn't know, I heard about this guy, I heard about what he had done, but he asked me to come and follow him. And so I said, okay, okay, I've seen the things that he's done, so I came after him and I followed him, and now I want you to be able to experience what I've experienced. Nobody else wanted to have anything to do with him. He had no other friends except for the tax collectors. So he gets his associates, he gets them, come on over to the house, we're going to eat, we're going to fellowship. But what is Matthew doing right here? He's showing us something. Matthew is showing us right here that in order for us to be effective witnesses and to be able to reach out to people, we have to go to where they are or we have to bring them in to us. A closeness, close proximity that we have to bring people in. I've come, I've come, I've come, I've come to the rare conclusion that many believers who are saved, sanctified, are filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire are often very standoffish. <laughs> and we want to witness the people. We say that we want to be a witness. We say that we want to share our faith with people, but we never get ourselves in a position or set ourselves up in spaces where we can be able to have dialogue and conversations with people and tell them what was life like before Jesus came into my life. 
even when he came into my life. Matthew understands this and he shares this with the rest of his tax collector's friends and he tells something has happened to me. There has been a change in my life. Has him come over. And they begin to experience Jesus. They begin to experience Jesus firsthand for themselves. Thanks to God. If we are going to be effective witnesses to Jesus Christ, if we're going to be a witness, hey, we have to we have to break down the barriers that we create in our lives. We have to break down the barriers that we create in our lives, and we have to allow ourselves to get close to those who may not know the Lord. I know they may not smell like you. I know they may not smell like us. I know they may not talk the part, but they still need to know about Jesus. And God would divinely set up some things and some opportunities for us to be able to share our faith with people. And simply, all he wants us to do is start a conversation and tell them, you know what, let me tell you what my life was before I met Christ. Because when I've come to realize, we tell people our testimony, but we don't tell folks the already testimony. Oh yeah, no we don't. We don't tell folks how we was really out the loose before we got saved. We don't tell folks they see you married out with your kids, but they don't realize that no, that all your kids got different days. Not the real testimony. They see where you are right now. They see what you have. They see what you drive. They see how you serve in the church now, but they don't know you was out there. And it's in the conversations that we have with people that develop, that develops for them to be able to have a heart to be able to receive. Because none of believers are looking for real Christians. Who will talk to them and tell them, hey, you know what? I know where you are. I've been where you are because that was me five years ago before Jesus came in my life. I was jacked up just like you. I was smoking dope. I was drinking. I was getting high. I was sticking around. I was gambling. I was doing everything but still yet going to church every Sunday. But I never experienced any change. But when Jesus came into my life for real and I allowed him to come into my heart and rearrange the things, that's we have to share our real story with people. We have to let them know what you see, what you see right now is not always how it was. But let me tell you how this beautiful story started. Let me tell you how this transformation started. Matthew does this. Matthew does this. And because of what he's experienced, he asked all of his other tax collector friends to come over to experience the same thing that he has experienced in his life. So what is Jesus saying to us today? He is saying to us today that whenever, whenever if we are going to be effective witnesses for him, we have to tell people the real story. The difference that he's made in our lives. The true transformation that he's made. And listen here. Even if the transformation hasn't even all of it been made all the way yet, let them know, you know what, I'm still a worker to make it. Because can I tell you something? Even though I'm your pastor, I'm still a worker to make it. Because I still got some stuff that I still need God to work on me all. I still need God to mold my heart. I still need Him to transform my life. None of us in this room, no matter how long you've been saved, you ain't made it yet. Look at your name today, you ain't made it yet. I know you think you may have, but you have not made it yet. You have not made it. We are still a work in the making. If it was not for the grace of God, it could be us. So we have to share. We have to share what life was, what life was before Jesus came into our lives. And so now, Matthew, begin here in verses 29 and 30. Matthew is allowing them into his face. Allowing him into his face, and they're talking to him, and they're sharing with him, and they're conversating with him. And now, what happens is this they are now able to see the change that has happened in Matthew's life. Yeah. They see for themselves. He's no longer at the task of this booth anymore because Jesus has come and given him a new assignment, a new life now. He's not what he used to be. Oh my goodness. That's the awesome thing about Jesus that when he truly comes into our hearts, sometimes we can even look in the mirror ourselves and won't be able to see. We can't even say, oh, is that me? I mean, I used to curse folks out. I used to do this. Is this really me? 
Now they are able to see not only what happened before Jesus came into Matthew's life, but now they're able to see what happened when he came into his life. A change happened. People need to see that not only you just giving lip service, they need to see that your life adds up with your lips. They need to see that if you say that a transformation has happened in your life, or Tremaine Hawke said that a change has come over you, they need to see for themselves that a change has come over you. They're able to see the change in Matthew's life. He's not doing what he used to do. He's not going where he used to go. He's not hanging out with who he used to hang out with. There has been a change in his life. And so now, like before Jesus was messed up, I was considered an outcast. But now that he's in my life, he's changed me. Now I'm a disciple. And now life with Christ. Listen, I may have some ups and downs. But life with him is so much better than what it was. Life without him. We need to effectively communicate with other believers and say, you know what? Yes, I'm saved, but there are still struggles that I have. They need us to be real with them. They need us to come down to the level, not dumb down. They need us to come down to the level and be able to communicate with them and see and, and, and see the world through their perspective and so that we can be able to gain understanding and be able to get their heart because it's not religious activity that will pierce the hearts of men. And it's building authentic relationships with people that will pierce their hearts. And God will create a door for us to be able to come in there and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. And so all this activity is going on. Everybody's at the house. And so the religious people come on the scene. They say, wait a minute now, Jesus. What are you doing? Huh? Didn't you say you was the savior of the world? What are you doing? Why are you having dinner with scumbuckets? Why are you having dinner with low lives? Jesus directly went to them and said, Oh, I thought you must have got it twisted. It's not the sick people. It's not the well people that need the doctor. It's the sick that need the doctor. He understood this. He understood that in order for people to receive the good news of Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to come to where they are. I'm going to have to get personal in their lives. I'm going to come down to their level and meet them where they are and rub elbows with them so that they may be able to receive me. Are all the people you deal with saying? Do you have folks in your lives that you know that are not saved? And I don't want you to answer that question out loud, but if that's the case, are you witnessing to them? Are you sharing your faith with them? If you simply invite them to church and then the next day at work, and you say, you know what, hey, what did you think about the message? Simple conversation. Simple dialogue. That creates conversation for you to, start, for you to go back in there and keep the conversation going back and forth. Simple things that Jesus wants us to do. That we can be able to witness and share our faith with others. That's it. Tell them how lost you were before Christ came into your life. How you knew church but you didn't know Jesus. Tell them, tell them. And at times we have to use spiritual discernment. We don't give everything out all the at all at once. We have to realize who we're talking to and what we're saying. Not everybody's mature enough to handle the real thing right on top. Have to use spiritual discernment and do things in levels. But I have to share with them and let them know, listen, this is what my life was like before Christ came. Yeah. Yeah. I was lost. Good stuff. Good stuff. I was looking all over the world. I was looking all over the world for something to fulfill me. But nothing did. Good stuff. Nothing did. You're helping. But when he came in my life, yeah. he's made such a change. I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. But thank God I'm not what I used to be. Yeah. I'm not at the level that I desire to be in. 
But when I looked at Terry a year ago, I'm not that same person. And then tell them, this is what life is now like with Christ. I still have struggles. But by the grace and the power of God, I realize it's not me that lives, but it's the Christ on the inside that lives. And it's by his grace and mercy that every day that I'm living to fulfill the mission and the purpose that he has for my life. That's it. The babies are great with me. Hallelujah. If I can't get no help, they can't no help. God will create ways. God will create opportunities for us to share. Are we ready? Are we prepared to share? Are we open to share? Are we open, are we open enough to come into close contact with people and allow them to invade our space? We're so protective of our space. But when you look at Jesus, Jesus, he let everybody invade his space. Come on, you want to know me? Come on. Come on. Come on. You want to eat? You want to miss me? Come on. By any means necessary, he did what he had to do to make sure people knew who he was. But he never changed, he never altered his character. Yes. Yes. Never altered who he was. Yes. That's good. Yes. Never tried to be something that he wasn't yes. to win souls. Yes. Yes. Pastor Swims, what do I say? Just tell him. Yes. Before yes. I met him, yes. when he came in, yes. and what my life is like now. People are ready to hear. They're open to hear. But we have to take our mouths off mute and not and start saying something and start sharing. Simple conversation, simple dialogue that will open up ways for people to be able to see Jesus. That's all. If you got, I know you got a piece of paper because you got your bulletin this morning. If you got a pen, I want you to write down, if you got your phone, I don't care what you got, just something to get it down. I want you to write down three people this week, three people this week that I could be able to share Christ with. Got to be somebody on your job because y'all talk about everything else. Doing lunchtime, break time. Y'all was talking about get on up the James Brown movie, his steps and stuff. Y'all was, was talking about all of it. Gotta be somebody in your family. Gotta be somebody in your family that you can be able to talk to them about Christ. Because remember, it's not the religious stuff that's going to get them. It's going to be authentic conversation that's going to pierce their hearts. That's going to open up, uh, open up their hearts. And they'll be open to receive Christ and talk and, and hear about Christ. And thirdly, it could just be, you could be at the doctor's office in the waiting room waiting. Good morning, how are you doing? Find ways to start a conversation. It could be in the grocery store while you're waiting in line. Make sure you get to Walmart this week. All the soon it's going to be back, so it's going to be crowded. <laughs> places that we go, gas station, hair salon, barbershop, whatever, different places, random places that we go, that we're interacting with people, that we can simply share Christ with them. If our hearts are open to do it, God will make ways. If we say, sister to the Holy Spirit, God will create ways for us to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You say, well, Pastor, ain't all the way there yet. I know you're not, but that's okay. They need to hear that too. I'm taking baby steps, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You know what? I used to smoke every day, but now I'm down to three. I'm making progress. They need to hear the struggles. They need to hear those things that are real in our lives. That is what will pierce the hearts 
of unbelievers as we share the good news of Jesus Christ, they can be able to see that we're real as well. Right. And that we go through and have struggles like everybody else. Right. Write that down. And doing your prayer time this week, I want you to be praying. God, God, Lord, when these opportunities come, Lord, let me know when you made an open door. Let me know when you made that opportunity so I can jump right on in there, God. And share. All of us in this room know that we're supposed to share our faith. Amen. But all of us ain't doing it. Amen. And we need to do it. I'm not talking about somebody that's disgruntled at their own church and upset with their pastor. No, I'm talking about folks that don't even go to church. Yeah. They don't know the Lord. That's who we're, that's who we're after. Amen. To make disciples for Jesus Christ. Yeah. And to see their lives be transformed by the word of God. Yeah. That's the mission of the church, is to reproduce disciples. Not just to have great activities and events, yeah. Yeah. but to reproduce disciples. Reproduce disciples. That's what we're called to do. All of us in this room, that's our job. All of us in this room, that's our job. Is to share our faith Tell people who we were before Christ. Tell people what happened when he came in and tell them, listen, this, this is where I'm at right now. Since I've been with the Lord. Good stuff. Good stuff. That they may be able to see the transformation. If God can take a crooked tax collector That's right. Good stuff. and him along with other 11 unlearned men and they turn the world upside down, what can he do Amen. with us? Liars, thieves, fornicators, adulterers. What can he do with us if we leave everything and follow after him? What more can he do with us than he did with us? If he did it with them, he can do it with us. He's yeah. doing it with us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but he's transformed me every day. Every day my desires become more in his likeness and in his image. Yeah. Yeah. Changing my attitude. He's changing my heart. Changing my mind. That I may be more like him. Father God, I pray right now. Yes. Lord, that this word is not falling on deaf ears. Yes. But God, that we won't be just hearers of the word. Yes. But God, that we'll be doers yes. of your word. God, help us to be mature, God, that we're not just designing sweet stuff, God, but we want the real deal. We want the beef. We want the steak. We want the real stuff, God that will cause us to grow. We don't want to be spiritually malnourished believers. But we want to be healthy. 